Hi guys! So in the previous video, we detected the outlier and we decided we're going to remove this outlier. There could be other decisions to be made. If your data is not transactional data like this, but it's a time series data of sales data, you could decide to smooth the data. Smoothing the data is basically taking the average of surrounding data points. If it is, for example, a sales point on Wednesday in the third week of the month, you could decide to take the average of all weekdays because weekends usually you have a different sales behavior. It is higher than the usual weekdays. Let's say the weekdays are always having similar behavior in terms of total sales at the end of business day. So in this case, you might decide to take the average of Monday, Tuesday, of course, Wednesday, we don't, it's an outlier and take the, uh, along with the average of Thursday and Friday. So you take the average of the four days, except Wednesday, and then you decide to replace the value by the smooth value, which is uh, the average of that week. For example, an outlier could be a result of a recession in that day, maybe uh, some event that happened. Maybe there's a, a construction uh, work in the uh, way to the mall and not many people decided to come to the mall. Uh, maybe, um, um, uh, or it, it could be an outlier in terms of not reduced sale, but in terms of uh, a heightened sale. Uh, maybe a surge of sale, uh, maybe a result of um, a, a, a certain activity been held at that day in the mall. In any case, this is one way to uh, a smooth outlier. Of course, as I trained you from the previous class, and maybe some of you saying it's a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time. You need to take a look at the sales of every week in that month. Make sure uh, for example, you have, uh, let me explain further, you have more than one option. One option is, for example, is uh, taking the average of all weekdays, as I explained now. And this is only and only if the behavior of the sale, the, the sales behavior across all weekdays is similar. Hmm meaning that almost the average, almost the high uh, 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 sale or the, uh, uh, the, 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 the sale at the end of business around a certain uh, figure, plus minus, of course. But what if, and this is actually the case in reality, what if Monday experienced a surge in sale, it's Tuesday always experiences lower sale, Wednesday is the Mother's Day uh, or the Women's Day for the mall in uh, Japan and Thursday is the men's uh, day uh, and Friday is a different behavior. So it is kind of fluctuating and this fluctuating behavior, if you take a look at every week of the month, uh, you will find out that this behavior is consistent. Monday is surge, Tuesday is lower, Wednesday is higher, Thursday is higher, Friday is lower, and then the weekend is way much higher. In this case, you can take the average of all the weeks of the, uh, of the, all the days of the week. You will have to take the average of all Wednesdays of the month. Don't you agree with me? Because Wednesdays have a certain average, experiencing a certain average because it's the woman's day for the month. Oops. Sorry. In this case, oh, sorry. In this case, guys, you would need to be extra uh, um, in this case, you would need to be extra uh, sensitive and careful and look at your data, visualize your data before you attempt to do any smoothing, any outlier detection or any even outlier dealing with, uh, 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 dealing with outlier. So uh, I hope that this is a nice example that uh, makes you understand why I invested some time exploring the data last time. I would like to now build this habit uh, as a, a data uh, um, steward at this moment that you always explore your data, see if there is any story you can, uh, 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 it can tell you before you even begin the analysis. All right, let's get started. Now we are going to uh, take a look at the data without the outlier and start our investigation with linear regression. Again, we're going to go data, data analysis. 
we're going to go regression we're going to go uh, y input is going to be a sales per capita and then x input is going to be the same here but we are having now 20 data points instead of 21 uh, earlier uh, earlier and a new uh, sheet and this new sheet is actually should be ordered after the data here and we call it regression 2. So regression 2, uh, here, this is an empty uh, sheet here, you don't need it. I It's just uh, meant to guide you through what you need to do as a next step. All right, guys. So regression 2 without Finland. Okay, so this is the result of regression 2 without Finland. Please name it this way. Okay, so now let's take a look. First thing is adjusted R square. Look at this beauty. Let's take a look at the adjusted R square earlier with the outlier. The adjusted R square was 0 0.4. So the model with the outlier was able to explain only 45% of the variance in the model. Now, look at that. Without Finland, the model can explain higher percentage in the variance of the model. This is an indication, especially that some of you and especially myself would be like, is this an outlier? Is this not an outlier? Mm, because it's been within 95%. And usually it's a common practice that up to 9% of outliers, uh, up to 5, sorry, up to 5% of outliers uh, in the data set, you could leave them. This is actually a standard. The up, you will always sometimes get outliers. Every time you clean the data, you might also get outliers. Again, you clean the data, the second circle, again, you will get outliers, especially if you don't have an abundance of data. You just collected your survey. And every data point is important because you have a ratio for a, a minimum requirement for the sample needed for using a certain technique. In this case, we have a common practice to leave at least 5%. And you know now why this practice has come to, uh, to, to, to be a standard. You can explain it by saying up to 95% of the data points uh, could be accepted because they are still within the normal distribution. However, in this data set, I hope now that you can see that sometimes you have to make a decision. Not really very difficult in this case because it's very obvious that this data point is way much distant than other data points, and especially with the visualization, visually you can easily see it that it's an outlier. So, and it's a three digits, and it's the only three digits. So it's a big jump. It's a three digits and the only three digits. It's a big jump. So in this case, how do you how do you make this difficult decision? Trial and error. Try to remove this outlier and produce the analysis again and see what effect. Is this an influential outlier? Aha, uh -huh. what did Nora say now? See, she said influential. Eh? Yes. If the outlier, for example, is very close to other data points and it is, let's say, not that far away and you remove it and you know what? Nothing happens to the model. Not very high increase in adjusted R square. Not these are already already significant. Not that much of a difference in the coefficients, if any. Then it is not an influential outlier. It's an outlier, but not an influential outlier. Aha! Yes, yes, guys. So even with outliers. There are influential outliers and non-influential outliers or uh, outliers that are not highly influential. All outliers will influence this, the model in a way or another, but not highly influential. We are going to make a bid on removing the influential outliers. Okay. So now when we remove this outlier, look at this, look at this guys, 69 compared to 45. It's a big difference. So this model, this model explains about 69.24% of total variance. Do you see that, lovelies? This is how we do things. We use our beautiful brain, yeah, to make decisions, not mechanical. 
This is the problem with analysis and statistics and, and, and analytics in general. We teach the black box. Yeah, do this. Step number one. Step number two. This is step number one. Step number two. Give to the computer as an algorithm. Talk to the computer like that. Give the, give the computer an algorithm, step by step instructions. But for you as a human being, you if you want to be a very good anal, an, a, 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 a analyst. A good consultant, you know what? Good in everything in life. You need to pay attention to details. And I will say that uh, I, it saddens me when I see that some of my female students are not as good as males in this kind of research or, or field. You know why? Because females is very well are very well known to be very much detail oriented. You ask your kid about everything in life. You ask your husband about everything in life. So you may as well ask your data about everything and anything possible. Yeah. So be a little bit uh, uh, detail oriented because some, some males are really good in data and, uh, and, and, and analysis. But really, it saddens me that females should be just as good, if not even better, because we are really detail oriented uh, uh, creatures. Um, or human beings. I don't want to uh, offend anybody. All right. So over here is less than or equal to 0 0.05. So this means all variables in the model are uh, uh, important. All right. Now let's take a look at the further effects on what really matters the most for us. Let me get rid of this. It's just taking up so much space unnecessarily. Over here, we want to take a look at both things, the coefficients, yeah, guys, and the p-value, and also over here, the independent variables. Let's take a look. This is, it was already significant, this one. It was already, in the previous investigation, it was already less than or equal 0 0.05. Over here, lovelies, let's take a look. You know what? I don't like this kind of uh, situation. I can see very well. It's messy. We don't like messy behavior, right? Here, like, dun, 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 dun. Let's leave three to four uh, decimal places. Now is good. So we're going to take a look at these guys. This is really low, mm, but it's maybe a, 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 a percentage or a, a fraction. So it's okay. Most importantly, it's significant. And over here, this is not significant. And over here, it is significant. So this is greater than 0 0.05. This is less than or equal 0 point. All right. Another thing we need to look into is the, 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 the signs. Are they as expected? The GNP per head, as it increases one unit, it also yields an increase in a certain way in the sales. When the unemployment rate increases, the sales per head decreases. That's 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 make makes sense. Decreases by fifty two point seven. Okay, by zero point five two seven per capita. The percentage here, when it increases by one unit. The sales per capita increases by $15.22. Okay, that's good, that's good. All right, so now we have this as insignificant. What do we do? That is the second question. Do we have more outliers? Let's take more influential outliers. Let's take a look. Two times, stand, two standard errors. And let's see if we have any influential outliers. If the absolute value of the residual is less than or equal to this and this standard error is supposed to be fixed because we're going to copy it through then give me one else give me zero and that we have also here an outlier let's take a look is it an influential outlier or not i'm going to take a look in terms of visual and i'm going to also take a look in terms of the values. So let me take a look by a little bit getting rid of all these decimals that are noisy. 
This is 62. Mm, I see. But there is also this value. This value is a bit close as well. Do you want to try to get rid of 18 and see if there's any difference in the the in the in the output? Hmm, why not? Let's do that. What is number 18? Let's go back to the data for Finland. As you can see, I am lucky that I kind of uh, deleted, uh, uh, copied the data again. So I have the data twice. So here, let's get to 18. 18 is Sweden. So let me get rid of Sweden. And that will be 18 and that will be 19. Okay, and now let's produce uh, a linear regression mo model, but put it in this in the same uh, data uh, sheet. All right, or if you want, we can put it in a new sheet. Let's put it in a new sheet. All right, no problem. Okay, let's go data. Okay, why? Uh oh. What did I do? I haven't done anything yet. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to delete this. I don't know what happened all of a sudden. So, uh, data analysis, regression. Okay. The Y range. Y range is this guy here. Sales per capita. And the X range. Same, same. Be careful. It's the lower one. It's the lower data set, the data set that has 19 points. Always make sure that you uh, you check residuals and you know that this is 19 points. So this is the regression without Sweden. Is Sweden an influential outlier? This is the question. Actually, it did help us here. So it is enhancing here the uh, the uh, adjusted R square it's now 0 0.7 compared to how to compare to let's put it here out after Finland compared to 0 0.6 something right 69 692 69.2 compared to 71 mm, okay there's some en enhancement this is still good Let's take a look at, for example, this, sorry guys, this unemployment rate, it was insignificant, right? It's still the same, you see? It is still the same. Mm. So there is no meaning for me to keep on deleting outliers unless I would like to get rid of this guy without Sweden. So it is your call. I'm gonna do the uh, uh, data. You, you, so now you have two options. After you deleted Finland here, without Finland, you have two problems. Problem number one, insignificant unemployment rate. All right, let's think about it now logically. This is how you need to do as a steward, as a data steward, as an analyst. You have the problems now that you are facing, problems we are facing right now. First problem is we have insignificant unemployment. Second problem that may be affecting the first problem we have outlier, another outlier is Sweden. So the first course of action, A, investigate results without Sweden and to check if un 
employment will become or will be rendered significant. If yes, yes, no. If yes, great job, I am so happy. You have a model with three independent variables and without two out without two outliers. If no, what to do? Check if removing outliers enhances model performance in any way enhances model performance significantly in any way and make decision accordingly. So this is your uh, blueprint, systematic. This I call it a systematic training. I'm, I'm systematically training you to deal with situations. So say which problems I'm, 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 I'm facing. Is this problem affecting this problem? Why am I asking myself this question? Because maybe I need to deal with this problem first. And then this problem will be no, pr not present. This is what happened to us with Finland. With Finland, I had two problems. Outlier Finland, insignificant unemployment, plus insignificant was the third one which is the percentage of GNP spent on education. Because the outliers affect the insignificance uh, uh, or the p-value of the coefficients of the independent variables. We dealt with the outlier, we deleted in Finland, we found out, first of all, that the R-square has enhanced. Second, that one of the variables are now insignificant. So this is what we're doing right now, regression without, uh, 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 it's, 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 it's Sweden. The regression without the Sweden, look what happened. Now we having the same problems again. We having, this is, look, this is less than or equal 0 0.05. This is greater than 0 0.05. And this is greater than 0, 0.0. This is what I told you previously in the, in the, um, in the first, in the class on Tuesday. I told you sometimes deleting outliers will render some points insignificant. Now, I hope one of my students might become my master student or even doing research with me. This is why I am not torturing you, students. When I, when you're doing research with me, I will train you and I will come to show you why I ask you to delete each outlier at a time. This is what Nora does. I never delete, for example, do you guys remember the data set of Mao Palace? The Mao uh, uh, Palace data set? We had more than one outlier. Do we delete them all at once? This is another question for a data steward. Are you going to delete outliers and clean outliers all at once? Or are you going to be uh, 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 patient and get your cup of coffee Focus and say, tell yourself, I have five outliers. I'm going to order them from the highest value to the lowest value. And I am going to delete each one at a time. And I'm going to write on a piece of paper. Why a piece of paper? Because my teacher is old school and this is how she trained me. And because she told me that at a certain point, when you do the same process again and again and again and again, you get a, a, a dead brain. Your brain starts losing, really, uh, you, you start doing things mechanically that you forget to use your brain anymore. Aha! Uh -huh. Because you're doing the automation and at the same time you want to use your brain. And your brain is already overwhelmed with just doing clicks, 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 clicks. So having an old school, a little piece of paper reminding you after each run, you need to look into the R-square and actually documenting the R-square. And documenting here all the p-values on that piece of paper makes you at the end of all the analysis look at this piece of paper and say wow 
I got it. I need to stop here. And then when you're reporting on your thesis, you don't just report the last result. You show your hard work. Create that table. Reproduce the table in an Excel. It's easy busy now because you documented everything on a piece of paper. Document everything on a, in an Excel and then present it in your thesis and show that or present it even in your a presentation as a consultant show that you deleted each outlier at a time and you're stopping there and look how much appreciation you are going to get from your uh, from your uh, team in the future when you become really experienced you will start doing like me what which is i'm going to be grouping the outliers into groups because i think these outliers are 60 something these outliers are 50 something i'm going to delete the 60 something outliers and see what happens and then delete the three digit outlier alone and delete this is all together because i feel uh, i don't need to delete them one by one but as a steward you are still young it's still your first uh, investigation one by one one by one even if this is gonna kill your spirit <laughs> and you're gonna feel this is so horrible patience patience will get you where you need to be and where you deserve to be all right let's do it like that and now what does that tell you this tells you that the performance is even worse by deleting more outliers yeah so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just leave it here leave it with finland only so i'm gonna just uh, based on this uh, result uh, this is the data set as is with no Finland. So this is my favorite data set, the data set that gets me the best results, which are getting two significant variables and one insignificant variable. This one insignificant variable now, what we are going to do, we're going to get rid of it. So we're going to run the analysis again, as you can see here. This is the data again without Finland only. Sweden is kept, yeah? But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get rid of unemployment. So over here, unemployment out. So let's do the data, then an analysis and again, and do regression three. Look at this inconsistency, shame on me. It should be three as a three here, the Greek letters. Okay, let's go data solver no 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 sorry sorry i started losing focus huh okay here data unemployment three perfect this is the y residuals new worksheet and this new worksheet i'm going to move it after the data set and I'm going to call it regression E3. So now the R squared is already higher, 0 0.74. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, adjusted. Aha, uh -huh. Nora, focus. Adjusted. It's multiple linear regression, right, guys? Adjusted. And then over here, let's take a look at the coefficients and the p values. p values are awesome. And here's the coefficients. And basically, uh, what we need to do in the next video is go over the assumptions because these p-values mean nothing if we don't validate the assumptions. So I will see you in the next video.